Yeah, thank you. All right. So hopefully you're here for what is probably going to be known as the best talk. I mean, <laughs> Defect Dojo. Sorry, Defect Dojo. So I'm going to talk about Defect Dojo today. Um, just curiosity, people who are currently using it. Good. And obviously, I'm going to assume the rest haven't. So this is great. This is an intro talk, and that's the whole purpose. I'm going to have to fly. There is so much to Defect Dojo. Oh my goodness, I could, I, well anyway, I've talked for this for over an hour. I've done two day trainings on Defect Dojo, so like, I can talk a lot about it. So I'm gonna go quick. So, this is me, I'm Matt Tesoro. Um, I'm gonna talk about Defect Dojo, what, what I'm calling, I guess in this title, the DevSecOps single source of truth. And I'll talk about the why and the how and all that good stuff about Defect Dojo. So, who am I, right? The lengthy introduction. So I like to call myself a reformed programmer and uh, AppSec engineer. I still like programming. Honestly, when I have long, bad days, I will open up VI and program, and that's how I relax. Um, so I'm kind of crazy in that regard. I'm also the CTO and co-founder of Defect Dojo Inc. So there is actually a company now behind Defect Dojo that is helping keep Defect Dojo, the open source thing, alive and well, as well as having a commercial offering. Uh, I've been over 15 years in the OS community. 2008, I think, was when I started. It's been a long and very fun ride. I would recommend anybody who hasn't had that long of a ride to do it, because it has been great. I'm a core maintainer for Deep Break Dojo. I'm the host, although this year was interesting for me, so the podcast went very quiet, but I have an episode coming out next month, and we're going to start back monthly episodes, so yay. I'm on the board of global directors. I was a co-lead for the AppSec Pipeline, and I also ran the WTE project. And just so you know, my bias is I have 20 plus years, 22, no, it's, ooh, it's longer than that, it must be 24. The last version of Windows I ran was Windows 2000. And then I said, I'm done with this noise, and I started running Linux. And that's all I run now. In fact, my poor kids, when they went off to college, I said, I will happily buy you a laptop, but it has to come from System76 and run Linux. So that's who I am, just to be fair. I write in Go, and this is actually me, doing my second degree black belt double board break test. So this body got that high off the air and didn't <laughs> land on my backside. <laughs> oh. I, I, that was in May and I started prepping for this in September. I was very afraid of that kick, but I made it. So that was great. So I'm a second degree black belt. Okay, so let's talk about Defect Dojo. What is it? Quick introduction. So. If you're doing AppSec, right, you're probably doing these kind of things, right? You likely, when you start, have no idea what you have. Every time I've done multiple times, I've been a product security lead or an AppSec lead or whatever, you go into a new job, and in a lot of cases, you have no idea even what your inventory is, right? I have no idea what I'm walking into. Um, and when that happens, you need something that can kind of grow and change and modify and be flexible over time, because it inevitably happens. You buy a new company and suddenly you have more apps, or you sell a company and apps go away, or divisions change and companies shift around and you have to move things around. And then if you're running any kind of complicated infrastructure, you're gonna have a boatload of different tools. Oh, we have Kubernetes for some of our stuff, but some of our stuff is on traditional VMs, and I've got a container thing, and a SaaS tool, and a DAS tool, and an SCA tool, and a Kubernetes security tool and my cloud security tool, and I have all these tools and every vendor is very conveniently giving you their own representation of what a problem is, right? Uh, in Dojo, what we would call a finding. And so I need to make sense of all these different representations of a finding. So I need a way to find that single source of truth because otherwise I have to take these 12 different tools and make sense of them individually, which is awful. And so I want the ability to sort, modify, and combine data from different tools and understand different views of that data based on who I'm talking to, right? If I'm talking to the head of a department, I want to be able to say, hey, head of the department, here's what all of your apps look like. If I'm talking to a single app team, I want to be able to say, hey, single app team, here's what your app looks like. And I want to be able to slice and dice the data. And then ideally, I want to dedupe duplicate findings and I want to do things like have false positives show up once and never show up again, because those are the bane of your existence. In fact, at, at Rackspace, Rackspace is a hosting company in the US that was big until Amazon and the other players decided to get into it, and then they got squished. Um, but I owned everything that ran our cloud as, as a product security lead or the, the lead of the product security team. 
And we owned everything from the infrastructure up. And so we had all these different tools that we had to make sense of. And the ability to dedupe false positive and group those findings saved us. We could be so much more productive because I let the tool, in this case Defect Dojo, do the kind of dumb stuff that computers are really good at, and I could let my team use their brain to do the interesting testing stuff. So, how do you solve all those problems I just enumerated, right? What do you do? Well, whoa, oops, my, my career is coming loose. Um, we surveyed a whole bunch of AppSec professionals, and we found out what was the number one enterprise vulnerability management tool. Anybody got any ideas? Excel. <laughs> yes. And when I see and hear that, I have to do this. <laughs> Why? Well, it makes as much, this is my poor dog, I put rain boots on him, which really makes as much sense as using Excel for this. But why? Why do that to yourself? There are better options. Yes, Excel works, for some definition of works, but there are much better choices. So in my mind, and I would suggest in your mind, Defect Dojo is that choice, or it's certainly a choice. So what does it do? So Defect Dojo was created by myself and some other people at Rackspace who had the same kind of AppSec problems you have to solve those problems. We needed to manage a whole bunch of different product teams, a whole bunch of different tools. I wanted to normalize and dedupe those tools. I had to do both manual and uh, scanning assessments and combine those outputs. Um, I wanted to be able to customize the deduplication to be able to say, hey, to be able to dedupe between two runs of this same tool, these are the things I care to look at and have you do the deduplication. I wanted custom port re report generation. Um, we have tagging all throughout Defect Dojo, so it's, you're easy to customize it specifically to your environment. Um, there's a calendar of security activities, which we honestly put there as kind of a lark. We were like, eh, we'll put a calendar in there. And it ended up being very useful if you're at a manager level because when I had someone come to me and say, oh my goodness, I need to drop everything and have your team work on this, I could quickly say, okay, that's fine, but here are the four things I'm not going to work on. Are you okay with that? And they suddenly went, oh, well, that one's important, and oh, shoot, that one's important, and maybe that one you don't have to do, but that last one, yes. So I needed one person. Like, okay, one person, great. Right? That was super useful. That was an accident, to be quite honest with you. And then obviously, if you do all your input into Defect Dojo, you have a history of what went on which is very useful, you know, the inevitable, when was the last time you tested app X? Go into Dojo, it'll tell you. I tested it on this date, here's the findings we found, done, right? And at one place I even did a, a chat bot to talk to the API and I could actually just ask the chat bot, hey, on Slack, you know, slash Dojo in Slack, this app. Last time we tested was this date, here's the findings. Nice. So this is OWASP Defect Dojo, this is what it looks like. Um, if you go to GitHub and download it and install it today, this is what you get. Um, as I mentioned, there is also a pro version of Defect Dojo. This is the SaaS version that we run for you in a single tenant instance uh, in our cloud. And that also has a dark mode. Um, I know. <laughs> I love the reaction when I saw that. I was like, ooh. <laughs> People will give their souls for dark mode. It is so cool. Like the power of the dark mode. It's great, but we have a dark mode in pro. It is a stupidly active project. Um, I pulled these numbers the other day. There are, well, we do monthly minor version releases, so once a month we do a 2.something.0 release. And then every week in between those monthly releases we do a bug fix release. So 2.30 right now, 2.35.something. Um, we are in the top 20 index, but was it? Oh, 400 contributors, which is pretty nuts. Um, we're at two, well, this is actually a little, I think we're at 234, 235.5 now. Um, it's mostly Python. This was for a month. We knocked out 126 pull requests. We had 21 open, 20 issues closed, 28 closed, and 21 new issues. So this thing churns. Like, it is good that I have a full-time job working on Defect Dojo, because I don't know how I could do this without that, quite honestly. Oh, and this was something that happened earlier this year. We passed the 10,000 PR mark. That was a number that surprised the heck out of me. Some of our team was like, dude, did you just see this? I'm like, what? We're almost at 10,000 PRs. 10,000 PRs is kind of nuts. 
Um, Defect Dojo, talking about security tools. We integrate with, we now have 179, did you say? Oh, say, uh, this slide's out of date. We integrate with 179 different security tools. So Defect Dojo knows how to take 179 different security tools, normalize them, dedupe them, diff them, all in one, right? Yes? Well, that's true, my slide is correct. It's just not really correct. <laughs> it's correct-ish. It's approaching correct at a, at a high rate of speed. <laughs> so how can you install Defect Dojo? Uh, there is a Docker Compose. That's probably the easiest way to get it up and running. There's a Compose file up in the repo. There's a community contributed Helm. Um, hopefully you are good at, at Kubernetes if you're going to use that, to be totally frank, because it's a community contributed Helm, so there's a lot of people who have a lot of different opinions that get merged into that very abstract Helm. If you get what I'm saying, it's not a bad starting place, but I wouldn't use it like just to copy paste. You need to edit it some. Um, we still have an installer called Go Dojo that installs on Iron. In other words, just natively on a VM disk. Uh, I wrote that. I would not recommend using it, just to be blunt. <laughs> I wrote 11 years ago, I wrote the first bash script to install Defect Dojo, and I got tired of maintaining like 1,200 lines of bash, so I rewrote it in Go. Just because of the differences in Python that exist in OSs versus in a container where we can pick whatever one we want, Iron is getting really harder and harder to support, so that one will probably die soon. Um, we do have an AWS AMI, which is of the open source version. I think it's, I don't know what it is. Is it 50 a month? I can't remember how much it is. Um, but it's basically, you. we have a pre-built AMI. You can go click, click, click at Amazon and pop up a defect dojo. And then, like I said, we have a SaaS offering, which is nice because now I can actually pay people to work on Defect Dojo, which is pretty cool. So, how am I on time? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. So, Defect Dojo and DevSecOps, how does that work? So, if you're familiar with me and the AppSec Pipeline project, we produced this output as part of the AppSec Pipeline project. Aaron Weaver and I were working together at the time, and we were saying, like, what are the common things that have to happen? in an AppSec program or a product security program or whatever that you just have to do. And we were trying to automate as many of the things as we could. And so inevitably, you have some kind of intake right here. I've got some kind of request coming in. Now this could be triggered by a merge into the main branch. This could be it's the end of the month and I do a monthly scan. Whatever it is, you have work coming in and that's the intake position. Then the triage is Okay, I have work show up on my desk. Quite frankly, how much love can I give this request, right? Because inevitably your team is smaller than the amount of work you have. You have to sort of prioritize. So triage is mostly around prioritizing how much testing you can afford to do. It's a really scary, big, important app. Maybe it's getting a manual pen test in every single tool you have. Maybe it's an unimportant app and it's going to get one automated test and we're calling it good because just frankly, we don't have enough bandwidth to do more than that. Then pipeline is the testing. This is where you automate tools ideally and they just run. Uh, push those into some sort of vulnerability repository, which I tend to like using Defect Dojo for some odd reason. And then from there you can push off to whatever stakeholders in what we call the deliver position. So this is like the conceptual framework, ideally for doing security automation. And I've done this before. I did this at Duo Security. I had a framework that we were testing a whole bunch of Python repos and when I got done, I could do, what was it, 46 Python repos in 3 minutes and 30 seconds by horizontally scaling the poo out of this thing in a cloud, which is really great. All containerized, all lots of magic and glue code. But this is the kind of stuff you can do. Now, I didn't start there. I started at a very small scale, but that's where you can hit. So this is what it looks like for real Z, like a real implementation of it. Here at, on the side, I have GitHub or GitLab if I'm doing CI, CD, or any kind of automated scanning. Right, I'm going to run some number of tools, whatever they are. Those will pump all those results into Defect Dojo. Defect Dojo then has a bi-directional support with Jira. Um, so if you have developers working in Jira, you can push issues there. If they get closed on the Jira side, they close on the Dojo side and vice versa. You can pump out reports and metrics out of the API of Defect Dojo. If you have something like Archer and it actually gets installed, I can't believe how many people I've seen have Archer on a shelf 
It's amazing to me. That is not free software. <laughs> and I don't mean free as in freedom. I mean free as a dollar. And it doesn't get installed. But then also if you're doing manual pen tests or false positives, you can mark them in Defect Dojo, and Defect Dojo will remember. So one of the sort of ideas behind Defect Dojo is there are certain things a, a human has to do, but let's make the human do it once. So if I mark a particular result in a tool for a particular product and say, this is a false positive, Dojo will remember. And the next time I run that tool and it sees it for that same product, it'll just mark it a false positive and you're done. Right? Like those dumb things that computers are good at. We do it with Dojo. So here's an example of one particular place where I worked where we installed Defect Dojo. And when we began, we had 44 assessments happening every year. Um, we got Defect Dojo up and running in year one. We bumped up to 224, and by the way, we lost. No one got cut in half, by the way. 3.5 was a half-time allocated FTE got unallocated to us, so everyone's fine. Um, but we lost some people, and we actually went faster. And then we lost even more people, and we went even more faster. Yes, absolutely. Right. So if you have coworkers you don't like, get Defect Dojo. And that's probably everybody in the room, so like I have, I have a very receptive audience. Now, you're not necessarily designed to fire people, but this was kind of crazy because we went faster. And what we did is we took all of those like blunt edges where you cut yourself and polished them out of the process and made it kind of as much as, of an easy button as we could. And suddenly like people who do work that's fun and rewarding, like do more fun and rewarding work. It's just crazy time. Um, and so by taking all that drudgery out, we actually got way more throughput from our team. Here's another example. This is one that actually Aaron Weaver did where he was working. Um, after we started working at different places, they were very much an Atlassian shop. So a developer would check code into a repo that would trigger a webhook to, he had an AppSec pipeline that knew how to fire off dockers with containerized tools. Those tools would run, dump the results into Defect Dojo. They'd push those to Jira as well as send a Slack message to the developer channel and say, hey, we just ran a test. Here's what we found. Right? So you can do these kind of things nicely with Defect Dojo. And the thing that's really beautiful about Dojo is Dojo doesn't care what these are. I mean, I got three logos here. These could be anything. And if you get tired of App Spider and you want to switch it out for a different DAS tool, you just switch it out. And Dojo doesn't care, and the process downstream doesn't change. So it really empowers you to be able to say, hey, vendor, you are not meeting my needs. I'm going to kick you to the curb and remove you from my environment and pick a different one because guess what? My process doesn't change. Right? And this was honestly not designed into Dojo. It was a happy accident when we made it, but we realized, like, wait a minute. If Dojo doesn't care what this is, as long as it can import it, then I can switch these out and nothing changes, which is really nice. Oh, so for that example, uh, Aaron was looking at 15 repos in four months. He ran it, his AppSec pipeline 5,100 times with 25,000 container executions. This is another example of where you do this automation around it and you get these kind of numbers. The other thing to mention is that Defect Dojo has a full API, a REST API behind it. So anything you can do in the UI, you can do with the API. So uh, some of our customers that you are using our SaaS, they're 97, 98% API traffic. They literally hardly ever log into the thing, right? And that's fine. I don't really care. Um, but if you want to do auto all automation, you can do it. If you want to log in and poke around with the UI, you can do it, whatever you want. Oh, and then finally, at my time, oh, I'm still doing good. Finally, this is an important aspect, too, that kind of came out almost accidentally of Defect Dojo's use. And that now instead of like when DevSecOps first started happening, I'd hear people saying like, oh yeah, we took this tool and we plumbed the results directly into Jira and oh man, it's so cool. And I'm like, yeah, how long did that last? Right? Because inevitably these tools are noisier than you want them to be. Now you can do some tuning in the tool itself and you can get some value from that. And you can maybe tune down the noise some, but they're not perfect. And probably the best thing we had is that Defect Dojo gives you a second spot to trim out those findings that you can't trim out by adjusting the profile of the scanner. And then suddenly, I have the ability to actually push only actionable findings downstream to the developers here, because I have two places 
that I can filter out those bum findings. Because inevitably that happens. You have a tool that reports something. I remember one place we worked, we had an auto-generated help for all of our web apps, and they didn't put some particular security header in the auto-generated HTML. And every time you're in a desk, enter, I got like 87. Oh my god, this header is missing. Great, we're not going to change out our automated help generation. False positive. Right? I do that once in Dojo and never saw them again. Like that's fantastic. So what's next? So and just as a, an aside, uh, my uh, co-founder of Defect Dojo Inc. and one of the people who was the first people writing code on Defect Dojo Inc., Greg, uh, did some research the other day and found out that, is it June 11th? June 11th was our 11th year anniversary from when we first started putting keys to keyboard and made Defect Dojo. So it's, it has had a great, it was a couple years in Rackspace internally and then we open sourced it and it's been open sourced ever since. And an OWASP project, I think it was open sourced for maybe a year or so before it became an OWASP project. But so what's next? So actually as of next month, we're going to deprecate MySQL and uh, RabbitMQ. Sorry for the people who are using that currently, but we support Postgres, Redis, MySQL, and RabbitMQ. And that makes a nice matrix of testing every time we want to test all the things. And to be honest with you, it's painful. Um, we've been running MySQL 5x, 5.7x for a long time. I only use Postgres, so I've never actually done the work to get it to MySQL 8. No community member has done that. And to be honest with you, I'm tired of having 4x the tests when I can limit what we do and have uh, like one quarter of the tests to run. So um, we're deprecating it. And we have some instructions in the discussion in GitHub on how to do that transition if you need to. Um, and then the other thing we're working on is I think from in terms of features, Dojo is pretty darn complete. I mean, it kind of has everything it needs. So what we're really doubling down on is increasing our testing and the ability to make sure that every release releases without bugs. That's the biggest thing for us now that we really want to double down on. Um, and then we're also increasing... API testing as well to make sure we don't have breakages in API. Uh, I've got an intern actually who's a college kid working on making a test so we can test API differences so we'll have a report of any API changes between release to release. And then we just upgraded to Django 4.2 and then shortly we will upgrade to Django 5. Or maybe it was 4.3. But anyway, we're updating the framework that it's built on, which is a fun thing. <laughs> Unglorious but important work. Oh, and there was a thing to remind me. We're 11, which is kind of crazy. I never realized uh, 11 years ago when I was on a whiteboard drawing up this thing to make my life less miserable that I'd be talking to a group of people in Lisbon <laughs> saying, like, this thing is cool, you should check it out. And then currently for Pro, we're also beta testing a new UI. Um, if you go by the booth, you can see this. It is a pretty sweet thing. Oh, it also has a dark mode, of course. Thank you. Thank you for the reaction. I appreciate that. And we do have a booth. Like, this is kind of crazy. I've been talking about Dojo for years, and we finally have, like, a company behind it. And we're actually paying engineers to work on open source defect Dojo, which is pretty sweet. So stop by the booth. We got some pretty cool swag. We got the, the Flipper Zero, which is, for some reason, will it attract the attention of people? Yes, fill out our survey, get an enter to win the Flipper Zero. Come by. We also have a, the, yeah, there you go. Yeah, so come by and talk to us if you want to. I appreciate that. And then I have a few more minutes, but in case you want to know more, I did a one hour live stream with Tanya at We Hack Purple. This is probably the best in depth overview because it's very, like this was painful for me to make because I couldn't figure out what I should not talk about. <laughs> Because <laughs> there's lots I haven't told you that Defect Dojo does. So if you want a better overview and you want to do this on your own, um, just put in purple Defect Dojo. You'll find it. It's the first hit. Bam. You can get an hour of me talking to Tanya if you, I don't know, want to kill an hour for some reason. So that's it. I am happy to answer questions, though, and I hope I have some. Yes? So with the caveat that if you run this on a Raspberry Pi, like two projects and three findings is it. 
<laughs> right? When you run on real infrastructure, the biggest customer, well, the only ones I really know about are customers. The biggest install I know about is doing, has 9,000 products, over 9,000, 9,700 ish products in Defect Dojo when they're doing 26,000 automated scans being imported into Defect Dojo a day. So it'll scale crazy, like up to millions of findings. But you obviously have a pretty big amount of iron, or not iron, but infrastructure behind that big of a, an instance. And you have to do a lot of configuration. This is like the, the best and the worst thing about Defect Dojo. It, and this is about the, the whole data model as well, which I didn't get time to speak about. The Defect Dojo data model is super flexible. I, we have customers that are doing embedded machinery where they have multiple specific versions of an embedded platform released out to customers, and they're tracking it by release to customer version of an embedded system. And we have other people that just have traditional apps. We have other people that are doing differences between dev and, and feature branches, right? And Defect Dojo will handle all of those different use cases, which is great, except for if you're new to Dojo, that flexibility can confuse you, and it can be problematic, right, because it's super flexible. And so the install of Dojo is super flexible, but that also means there's like 500 knobs and dials you can twist to get them just right. So some people have struggled with trying to get the infrastructure set up correctly, but it will do like crazy numbers. Most of the people I've seen have done one. The one person I know of that has done multiple uh, was a weird case where they were a pen testing company and they had one, one instance per customer because they wanted to be really, 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 really sure that customer A stuff never ended up in customer B's instance. There is R back in Defect Dojo, so you can separate out. Like if you want your team one of your product, product team one to not see product teams two results, you can do that. Um, in the UI and separate by RBAC. But I have, the only other instance I've seen is a multiple install was a, was a pen testing company. No, the, most of our customers just have one, or they have one in a test instance, but the test instance is literally just for test. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Sure. Right. Uh, Right now, just Jira. Um, we're looking at working towards getting the framework in place to be able to do more than just Jira. Unfortunately, when we first wrote Defect Dojo, we were at uh, Rackspace and we had Jira. So it's very like wired into Dojo. So we're writing a framework so that we can abstract that out and then add multiples. But right now, it's just Jira. Uh, I mean, I don't, timelines are interesting with projects like this. Uh, hopefully sometime before Christmas, but don't hold me to that. Okay. I, you're the one. I'm asking him. Mm hmm Oh, interesting. That's a great question. So, yes and no, and maybe. <laughs> so it depends. So there's several ways to get data into Defect Dojo, right? You can just output a file from a tool and upload it, right? That's the old school way to do it. You can have a CICD job that runs and pushes it to the API, and then that gets in that way. There's a couple integrations in the open source and a couple integrations in Pro that know how to reach out to vendor tools API and just automatically pull in results. Um, for those... I don't know about all the open source ones. I know the ones that we've done for Pro, they use what's called reimport. So reimport in Defect Dojo says, if you're scanning the same thing over and over, I will take a diff of the first and the second scan, and if I was in the first and I'm not in the second, I'm just going to close it because it's obviously fixed. And so you will get that diff if you reimport into the same test over and over, which our, the Pro API stuff does you could also do that just calling the, there's a reimport API endpoint. You could do the same if you wrote some code. Does that make sense? Oh, push to the, oh, interesting. We don't have any outbound to the tool. You, it's got a full API. You could do whatever. Like I've written code against the Dojo API. I forget what tool I used. There was a really, 
less than stellar SCA tool I had in my past life when I had Defect Dojo. And it would tell me that lib law was broken because of this, lib law was broken because of this, and I'd have like seven lib laws. But the mitigation is like update lib law to this version, and all of these go away. So I wrote code against the API that when that happened, I would pull all those findings down, delete all of them but one, and then update that one to say update lib law to this version. So yeah, you can do that kind of stuff. You just have to write some code against the API. Yeah, so if, we're willing, if you're willing to knock out some integration code, you can do whatever. Cool. Yes. Thank you very much.